All right, so for our bell work today, warm up number 10, a family will travel 475 miles on their road trip. Which inequality can be used to find all possible values of T, the time, it will take to reach their destination? If they travel at an average speed of at least M miles per hour. So how do you figure out the amount of time it will take to travel a certain distance? Well, you're going to take the time and you have to take your distance and divide it by your miles per hour because distance divided by your speed will give you your time. So that's going to match letter C for your warm up number 10. Number two on warm up 10, the perimeter of a rectangle is 70. Remember perimeter means to add is 70, so it's going to equal 70. So the perimeter is equal to 70. The length of the rectangle is represented by X plus three, and the width is represented by three X minus eight. What are the dimensions of the rectangle? So I drew a rectangle, and I'm gonna include the length and the width. So I have X plus three as my length, 3x minus 8 as my width. And now I need to add them all together and set it equal to 70 because that's the perimeter. And when I think of perimeter, that means I'm adding each side together. So x plus 3x plus x again is 5x plus 3x is 8x. And then 3 minus 8 plus 3 minus 8 is going to be a negative 10. So that simplifies to be 8x minus 10 is equal to 70. Then I just need to solve for x, so I add 10 to both sides. 8x is equal to 80, so that means x is equal to 10. Did I find my answer yet? No, because it's looking for what are the dimensions of the rectangle, and all I found was the value of x. So once I found the value of x, I need to, to plug that into these equations. So my length was equal to 10 plus three. So that means my length is 13. And my width is equal to three times 10 minus eight. So my width is equal to 22. So the answer is C. For number three, it says, which of the following equations are represented by the graph? Okay, for this, I need to rewrite each equation that's given here, the one, two, three, and four in slope intercept form. So y equals mx plus b. Remember that m is your slope, b is your y intercept. So looking at this graph, this point right here is my y intercept. So that means that b is equal to two. Well, in this first equation here, my y-intercept is also two. Then I go ahead to find and find out my slope. So I'm gonna go my rise, which is positive seven, over my run, which is positive five. When I do seven over five, that's my slope, because it's always rise over run, so seven fifths, which is the same thing I have in equation one. So that means that equation one does represent this line, so my answer has to have a one in it. Well, A does not include equation one, so I can cross that one out. And equation C does not include the first equation, so I can cross that one out. That means I'm left with either B or D. B lists one and three, D lists one and four, so I can cross out too. I don't need to do anything with it because it's not even an option for what I have left for my answer choices. So let's take a look at equation three. Y is equal to X minus seven multiplied by X minus two. Well, when I multiply X times X, I'm gonna get an X squared. When I get an X squared equation, 
that means I have a quadratic function and that is not a linear function. So I can go ahead and cross out equation three. That leaves me with equation four and option D only. So once I rewrote option four, equation four in slope intercept form, I found my answer D.